Well, first off, I have to uh, welcome, I would just say referee extraordinaire. Now it's Hall of Famer. Congratulations. That has a ring to it, doesn't it? I'll tell you, it was one of the most pleasant surprises I've ever had, really. Uh, I was notified early on that I was on the ballot. Smitty, that in and of itself is an honor. Then I find out I'm the only referee on the ballot, a double honor. I said, geez, this is tremendous news. Then I learned from fellow well, now fellow Hall of Famer Russell Peltz from Philly, famous Philly Russell, that once you're on, you stay in the pool, similar to the Baseball Hall of Fame, as I understand it. So that was good enough. I had no concept to make it, as they say, on a first ballot. So when Ed Brophy notified me, uh, you know, I said, I thought I won the Oscar, the Emmy, <laughs> and maybe the Nobel Peace Prize, because, as you know, it's the epitome of our sport, and I'm truly honored. Yeah, and I was really happy because it comes at a time where I've been, you know, uh, praising you for many, many years. And recently, you know that you and I have had a lot of conversations on the record, off right. the record, yeah. because I've been disappointed in so many high-profile fights where right. the referee, I felt, maybe didn't do their job, and I, you'd always were my go-to guy. So I was particularly proud of you. Well, I think you particularly played some role. Uh, respected gentleman in the sport who've made comments. In fact, you interviewed one. Uh, Ron Borges was just on your air. One of the finest writers that I've ever been affiliated with. And we got to know each other back in the, the height of the uh, Foxwood days. And positive from guys that really know what they're talking about. And I'm looking at one. That has to play a role in the voters' minds. So I'm appreciative yeah, in retrospect. So. Have you uh, thought about your speech yet? <laughs> yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, I have. I'll give you a little taste if you want me to. You're an emotional guy, so don't, you, don't start crying yet. No, Save no, it. <laughs> no. You know, if you needed a prototype for a ref or to come along, I'm your guy. Why so? Why so? I'm glad you asked. In the 80s, there was nothing like New Jersey when I broke in. In my second year, Smitty, there were 263 cards in Atlantic City. I was the DA of Atlantic City at that time. I literally, as Mills Lane did on many an occasion, have my fight bag at the office, and on Monday I'd go to the Sands, Tuesday the Tropicana, Wednesday the Claridge, Thursday the Playboy Club. I worked four fights in one particular week. And the 80s gave me exposure to meet everyone in the game. Then the 90s come along, and I'm blessed to have been chosen to referee in the Mashantucket Pequots, Foxwoods. They had a tremendous amount of boxing. There was more TV emanating out of that tribal nation than ever. Then in the 2000s, multi-licensing comes into effect. And I'm your poster boy. Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Virginia, Delaware, Ohio, Connecticut, Massachusetts, Rhode Island. I have, with all respect and humility, more state licenses than any other referee in the history of boxing. Now we go to 2010, the next decade, and Eurosport discovers me. And all of a sudden, I'm over in Europe with Eurosport doing uh, tournament boxing. Uh, Dean Chance's IBA is very strong over there. Uh, Dean, a great guy. And all of a sudden, I'm in Latvia, Lithuania, Romania, Greece, Kazakhstan. With me. With you. Kazakhstan. With you. We took over Kazakhstan. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, I rest my case. You know. Yeah. So I went, so, you know, the 80s, the 90s, 2000, 2010, I had all the exposure and um, the ability to be in with the finest fighters in the world. So that's the way I'm going to approach it. And then, of course, I'm going to thank family and tear up a bit. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. We'll be there. Yeah. And hopefully we'll do a, an in-ring like we do with the fighters with you about... Uh, the excellence of, of, of refereeing, but let's talk about Saturday. Let's talk about NBC Prime Time. Yes. And Premier Boxing Champions, your role in this broadcast. I was very, very fortunate to have been contacted, and my role is that of a rules consultant. 
Um, in my first meeting and in the rehearsals with uh, Marv Albert and Sugar Ray, Sugar Ray Leonard, Marv said, unfortunately, to some degree, boxing is, you know, boxing equal sign controversy. And they wanted someone with expertise to be able to bullet an answer. I'm glad you're doing what you're doing. You'd be perfect. So I'm glad they chose me. <laughs> and uh, that's my role. Basically, they said, Steve, you may not get too much air time. I said, listen, you've got 32 years in the middle, plenty <laughs> of air time. I've had air time. Whatever comes, comes. So basically, I've been brushing up. I have a pretty good handle on Nevada rules, but there's some nuances. And um, I just want to be ready for them whenever they turn to me. In rehearsal, we did low blow, um, five minute rest, uh, leaving the ring, 20 second count to get back in, uh, general. But there's a lot of nuances that you have to be prepared for, and I'm excited about it. And uh, then again, the less they use me, that means the better the fight's going and the less problems there are. So I'm just very happy to be here. This is such an exciting concept. It's a great time for boxing too, yeah, Steve. Yeah. We, you know, we we have this card uh, and more NBC fights to come. We have CBS, we have Spike, uh, obviously HBO, Showtime. We also have some little fight coming up, uh, you know, May the second here in Las Vegas with oh, Manny and Floyd, which oh, will yeah. be the Super Bowl of boxing. Exactly. So I think for guys like you and I that have been in a long time, what I'm hoping is, you know, I'm a little boy with Muhammad Ali yeah. coming up on March 8th. A couple of weeks before that uh, fight, I spent with uh, with Ali and would become a friend, but. I'm hoping that there'll be some, you know, fathers that'll grab their son and, and, and they'll be watching this and maybe we'll develop, uh, you know, a, a, it's never going to be like it was, but hopefully it can be as good as it gets. Exactly. And on that point, your insight is excellent. It may not be as good as it was, but it's going to be the closest aspect because this is a learning experience for me. They say an HBO show reaches 1.5 million uh, on a good day. They're expecting a 20 million person household viewership Saturday night and uh, back in the day uh, in the East Coast we had three six and ten ABC NBC CBS growing up and everyone in the neighborhood with the rabbit ears with whatever those are the stations they could access and we're the it'll be be able to consume the consumption now will buy, be by every household that wishes to turn it on. You don't have to pay a sub subscription cable or anything of that nature. Well, you know, I, I hope that the bouts are, are fought, uh, you know, fairly and, and competitively, and, but I hope they, they find some way to get you in because nobody <laughs> thinks any better in the eye of a storm. You know, Ray Leonard and I have talked about a great fighter knows how to react in the eye of the storm when you're getting hit. Yeah. Well, as a referee, uh, nobody does it better at uh, reaction and making the proper decision in the eye of the storm than this man. Now, Hall of Famer, Steve Smoger. Thanks for joining me. God bless you. Appreciate it, Smitty. I appreciate it.